Katonda weje nga wali omulam na femu kubera okwe mtu yimirira sirwa mani sirwa buyiza na ye
you are and all that you've done. We lift our voices to you. We lift our hands to you. We lift our hearts to you. We glorify your name. We bless your holy name. You are a holy God. You are an amazing God. You are an awesome God. There is none like you. Who can be compared to you? We lift your name on high. We bless your holy name. For you are God as who you are. You have no beginning and you have no end. You reign over the universe. You reign over the islands. You reign over the, 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 the nations of God. You reign over the mountains of God. Your name is higher than every other name of God. We bless you for who you are. You are holy. You are precious. You are amazing. You are so kind. You forgive all our sins. And heal all our diseases. You are God that was in the world. You are God that has no beginning. And you have no end. I glorify you. I bless your holy name. You are a holy God. Your name is Jehovah. Adonai. Elohim. 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 Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nis, Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, bright morning star, the lily of the valley, the ancient of the day, oh master of nature, creator of the universe, you are all in all, we bless your holy name, we lift your name over the coronavirus, we lift your name over the nations of God, we lift your name over every fear. And we install you as King of Kings. We enthrone you as Master of Nature. We bless your holy name. Thank you for life, O oh God. Thank you for keeping us, O oh God. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for blessing us. We serve salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are so glad that we are born again. Our sins are forgiven. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome you, all of you that are watching online. Amen. We, we, um, we are so grateful that we can stand in the presence of the Lord. We are grateful that God has kept you. God has kept us. We stand in his amazing goodness. Can we say God has been good? God is good. And he's good all the time. Yeah, we, we are, this is a, we are See you in April. Almost the end of April. I mean, the, the world has come to stand still. But remember, time is time is moving. If there is anything that is not under any law, it's called time. Time does not wait. So you, we still have eight months before the end of 2020. I saw someone questioning that the, the prophet said that. This year, this is the special year. Where is the special that they talked about? I want to assure you that 2020 is a year of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is in, the, is in charge of the year. And whatever he said he would do, he will do. God is not a son of man to, to lie. Or one of us will change his mind. If we have a promise of God. All his promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. So we want to encourage you. Please don't waver in your faith. Don't walk in fear. Walk by faith. For the righteous are called to walk by faith. Faith is 
as the believing and, and trusting God. Even when everything seems contrary to ne what wang, you believe. That's what the Bible says about Abraham. That against hope he hoped. When everything, when everything was contrary to, to, to what God has said, Abraham believed. So it was accounted to him as righteousness. Brothers and sisters, give up on those fears. Believe that God is and he will be. He never changes. He has brought us through so much. And still even this. It will pass. Because the Lord lives. We are still praying for the nations. We are praying for Uganda. We are praying for the, 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 the every nation in Europe. And we trust God is uh, tr tr uh, starting to take over nations. If you say, check on social media, many, many people are turning to the Lord. And they are, and they are calling upon his name. Here in Kawempe, Kawempe, our offices are opening from Monday to Friday. As uh, staff members, we are still functional. We are very, very essential. We are relevant even to our time. Uh, many people have brought their offering. We've been blessed. We, we bought some food stuff. Yes, uh, we are meeting needs. A few of our people have had to uh, have. Uh, um, to, to, to go and see a doctor. No one is sick of coronavirus. The, 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 there are a few people that needed to see a doctor and they didn't have money, so we are using what is coming in to bless others who don't have. That's the, that's the, kingdom, that's the kingdom economy. Those who have more, give to those who have less. So there may, there may be no need among us. So thank you all of you that are kept on bringing your offering. Sending on our mobile phones. God has been so good. We, 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 we shall have a lot of testimonies after this time. So so please, if you have any food need, please, don't hesitate to call us. I know the government is distributing food in various parts of the nation. But there, there are many people that have not been reached. Uh, those of, of you that are watching on the internet, sorry about the, the sometimes the internet here is not very good. But we shall post these services on our, uh, our accounts after uh, on YouTube. On, on Facebook. Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, and all these other social media. Amen. Amen. Shall we dig in the word of God? Do you have your Bible with, with you? Bible, you know, the thing with online, no one is watching you, so Umanye no one is supervising you. Some, some of you put on your phone, and then you, you, you keep doing what you are doing. And, and then you are you, you can hear us but you are not looking at us and you are not following us but you can hear the sound. Can I get your attention right now? If, if you don't have your Bible right where you are seated, can you go get your Bible please? Bible you and you would you stop everything you are doing for the word of God? And I'm, I'm actually going to read from the Bible. So this is the real word of God. So stop the cooking for now. Stop whatever you are doing and let's dig in the word of God for a few moments. I want to talk to you about the future. Where are we going? Where are we headed? I think that's the biggest question that everyone is asking all over the world. What's next? 
Things have been changed. Life will never be the same. We are going to have a new normal. But no one knows what this new normal is. But I want to assure you. The word of God has all the answers. So let's open our Bibles in the book of Acts chapter 2. And we shall read from verse 1. The book of Acts. That's the only historical book in the New Testament. There are many historical books in the Old Testament. But the book of Acts is the only historical book in the New Testament. So it's between the four Gospels and the Epistles. And so let's read from verse 1. The Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing might wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues, as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 5. And there were, the, there were dwellings, dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when the, this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And they were and how, and now, and how it is that, how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, uh, Judah, Cappadocia, Pontus, Pontus, and Asia. Abapazi, Nabamedi, Na Abapazi, Naba Medi, Nabe Miti, Naba Mu Mesopotania, Mubu Yudaya, Ne Kapadokia, Ne Ponto, Nemu Asia, Fagia, Pamphoria, Egypt, and, and the parts of Libya adjoining Slin, which visiting visitors from Rome, both Jews and Palestinians. Mufurugis Mufurugia. Nemu Pamphlia, Nem Missiri, Nemunsi, Ezeri Libua, Ezira Nekureni, Naba Lumi Abageni, Aba Yudaya, Naba Chufu. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speak in our own long tongues the wonderful work, works of God. Aba Kureti, Naba Warabu, two Lidabo Nanga Bogera Munimizafe. So we are all amazed and public saying to one another, whatever could this mean? And so we usually uh, we read from this chapter when we are preaching about the, the, the Pentecost, the, the day of the Holy Spirit. But I want to, 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 to introduce you to a subject Walking with God. Everyone say walking with God. Walking with God. We are going to walk with God. The times we have entered in. 
every person, every believer, whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you are going to have to walk with the Lord. Now, we are called to walk by faith. And that's in the Bible, many of us have walked with, by faith many, many many years. Years. We are also called to walk in his ways. And many of us have us over the years we've endured and endeavored to walk in the ways of the Lord. But the biggest thing that it's, we, we are called to do is to walk with God. Many people have walked by faith because they believed what they had. Many people have walked in his ways because someone taught them the way of the Lord. But to walk with someone, they need to be close to you. They they to, to, if, you are, if you are walking, like this season in Uganda, we are not allowed to drive. And, and so for, for many days each week, me and my wife, we get out of the house and walk. For two reasons. One, it's a good exercise. Two, we walk to, to our uh, to, uh, to church members who, who we haven't seen. Some of them have been sick. One had lost his, a, a baby. And, and so we go, to, we walk to their house. And so the other day we are walking. And we had to cross the road. And my wife told me I don't know how to walk. Because she didn't know which side to walk on. So I, we had to agree you stay on the left. And I say on the right. And so that's how we walk. We had to agree. As we walk, me and my wife, we are too close to each other. We, we keep walking. We, we, walk, we talk to each other. I, she talks and I listen. And that's, sometimes that's the only time I listen to her. Just kidding. But we, we have a communication as we walk. Everyone is walking with God. You, we, we've walked in the ways of the Lord. Even when we didn't know that he's with us. And we have walked by faith. Even though we have never seen who who does things for us. But the season we have entered in, it is a time to walk Walk with God. So the first time God wanted to introduce himself to walk with men is back in the, in the book of Exodus. And he says chapter, chapter 19. Exactly about 50 days after they crossed from, from Egypt. Went through the Red Sea. And now the Lord came and told Moses, sanctify the people. Let them clean themselves for three days. Because on the third day, I'm going to come down. I'm going to introduce myself. They are going to hear my voice. They are going to see me. And I'm going to introduce myself. So if you read on, chapter 19 and chapter 20, you realize the day when the, 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 that, that's the day, actually, that's the day of Pentecost. What was God doing? He was introducing himself to his people. The last, the last time these people saw God, I, I guess, for, for over 400 years, the Jewish people have never known God or met him. 
the only person who had an encounter with God was Moses in the burning bush. And so he had to talk to God and, and then inform the people. That's a relationship the people had with God. It was through Moses. But this time God said, I am tired of this middle man. I want to introduce myself. So he tells me, I'm coming to speak for myself. And you can, if you read on chapter 20, Exodus 20, God is speaking by giving them the Ten Commandments. Some people debate and say these are the commandments of Moses. The, the Bible does not call them the commandments of Moses. The laws of Moses. These are the laws of God. And they do not change. And, and, and so when God started to speak, the people got scared. And they came to Moses and said, We propose that we, we go home. But, but you stay here. Let God speak to you. And we'll do whatever He tells you. So they, they went back to the old method of of believing. Moses stayed as a mediator between him, between them and God. But God from the beginning had a desire to dwell among his people. And in Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, the verse says, I let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. This is among the, the, the instructions that God was giving Moses that God, the, the people of Israel were supposed to build him a tabernacle a, 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 dwelling a place for his glory. And what was the purpose? God wanted to dwell among his people. And in verse, in chapter, uh, in chapter 20, uh, 29, verse 45 and 46, the Bible says, I will dwell among the children of Israel and I will be their God. He promises even in the Old Testament. God never wanted to, 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 to be far away from his own. He already had a desire to relate to his people. But the, the, the people could not come near him. But you can see from the scriptures I'm giving you, God always had a desire to be with his people. And, and he says, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Who brought them out of the land of Egypt. That I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. You can see God trying to, 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 to take away the gap between him and these people. It, was, it has always been God's plan to walk with man. I mean, it's good to walk in God's ways. It is good to walk by faith. But it's the, be the best is walk with God. So when you come in the New Testament, we also, I can give you a few examples. In John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, verse 37, to 39. This is after Jesus had been baptized by John. By John yes. the Baptist. And, and the next day the Bible says Jesus went by jo John's church. He went by and then John saw him from a distance. And he told his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God. 
that takes away the sins of the world. So the Bible says in verse 37, the two disciples heard him speak. And they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them, following him, they say, say to them, what do you seek? Yesu na chuka na alabanga ba mugobele na babu na bagamba anti muno nyachi. I like the New King James. Njaga la New King because the, James. Because the, the words are very specific. Kwe bigambo bi tu kila dala kuso. Maybe other versions say, but Jesus turned to them and said, Who do you seek? Yesu ya bachu kila na babu za muno nyani. To seek is more than to look around. O kuno nyachi singa koko maga maga. When someone says I'm seeking, O muntu wa gamant no nyani. They have all their faculties focus on one thing. Ebi intu yebi on nabi on nabi babi tunuri za kuchiri. And they are they are determined to find. Elanga maliri do kulaba. So when Jesus Jesus turned. The words he uses. And the key says, what, what do you seek? They say to him, Rabbi. Which is translated as teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. Are, are you following? Jesus saw these people, these men following him. And then when he turned, he did not say, who are you looking for? He said, who do you seek? And then he said, they said, Rabbi, Rabbi, where do you stay? In other words, where is your dwelling place? Remember in the Old Testament, God wanted to dwell among his people. So he called them. And he told them to build him a tabernacle. I think some Bibles call it the tabernacle of Moses. But it was actually the tabernacle of God's glory. So in the New Testament, Jesus has come. He's been baptized. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the two people, the two men, are seeking him. And they said, where do you dwell? Where do you stay? He said to them, come and see. They came, they saw where he was staying, and remained with him that day. Now, I, 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 I just want to, 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 to let you know that from the beginning of time, through the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, God Katonda. wanted to live among his people. Right before he died, Jesus emphasizes this to his disciples. In John 16, 13 and 14, he said to them, however, when he the Holy Spirit, when the he, when he the Spirit of Truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare to you. In another verse, Jesus has told his disciples that you will know him because he will dwell in you and with you. The world will not know him, but you will know him. And one of the functions of the Holy Spirit his, Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. Now guiding is a word we use when someone is traveling. You don't sit down and say, I'm being guided. No, guiding is a, a, a word for travelers. In, 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 in the days of old, when we had no road post signs and whatever, people were the, the, the signs you could stop 
stop uh, if in Uganda we still do that. You, 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 you stop and ask people. Where is Kawempe Worship Center? Worship Center and people will point you and say you go down, you branch off, you go up, you turn left, and then after turn right, go up, go down. In the corner. That's how, that's how Ugandans give the direction. And they point to you as out over there. You realize it wasn't over there after walking 10 miles. Uh, but that's what we call guiding. And so the, the Bible says, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, He will guide you. He will be your compass on the map. Remember, guidance is given to those people who are taking a journey. Somewhere, if you are doing something and you need to be guided, you don't go to sleep and say, I am being guided. We are talking about walking with God. In this new season, the people that are going to do exploits are people who are going to walk with God. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will tell you what to do. He says he will guide you. We will not, we will not walk blindly. Amen. Amen. The next thing he says in those verses, he, he says he will, he will tell you things to come. Let me tell you right now. The world has come to a dark spot. The, the world is so dark. Every nation is predicting something. And I can tell you everyone is predicting out of fear. Leaders are scared. Governments are confused. From the lowest of leaders to the highest office in every nation. People are scared. And uh, they are starting to make decisions based out of fear. But for you and I, who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, you should never stand out of fear to make any decision. We need to depend on, on, on the presence of the Lord. The Holy Spirit within us. He knows all truth. And Jesus said, he will guide us into all truth. He says he will tell you things to come. For the Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus. But also called the, the spirit of prophecy. In other words, we are not called as believers to walk blindly. I'll give you an example. In January, I believe it was the 5th of January. January we had a prayer meeting here. And thousands of people came. And before that, the Lord has spoken to me. And, and said, many people are, are, can affirm to this. We've been in this church and other churches. We've been saying, God is doing a new thing. God, God is doing a new thing. thing. And so when... 2020 came in January. I had the word reset. And, and, and I went and, and, and did some a little bit of research on it. And, 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 and I discovered it's something, it is a function on devices. If you have a smartphone, if you go to your functional settings and command your phone to reset, it will ask you a question. If this phone will go back to factory settings, anything that has not been saved on another device, you are going to lose. 
That's why we have iCrowd and i whatever the people use. But the moment you hit a, a reset button, the devices go back to their factory setting. As on 5th of January, in exploits of hours of prayer, many people spoke about this. God is doing a new thing. God has, uh, has pressed the reset button. Things are going to change. And, and, and you know, we did not think, we did not know how it was going to come. But finally, in the middle of March, and all of April, God did as he said. He does whatever he wishes. God. And all of a sudden we have, we have come to a stand here. All of us has gone back to a, a factory setting. I don't know about you in other nations. But here in Uganda. Whether you have five cars. You are walking. Whether you have a bicycle. You are walking. It doesn't it doesn't matter. You have a transportation company. And, and you, you own buses. You cannot drive without permission. We are all the same. When, you, when we are walking on the road, you meet a lot of people as, as they walk. You don't know who is the CEO or the manager. manager. Who is who? Ani, ani. We are all at the same level. Now we are not defined by what we do or what we own. But we are defined by what God has done on the inside of us. I said all that to confirm to you that God has spoken that these things are coming. In Matthew 24, 25, Jesus predicted these things. As a church, we should never walk blindly. We are the light of the world. Light is the guys, people where to step into the dark. The world should come to us and ask what's happening. What should we do? Exactly what they did in the book, in the chapter of Acts where we read. Peter stood up and explained what was happening in the book of Acts. I mean, God all of a sudden did something new. There is no in there is no story in history that a people, a group of people, have ever been empowered with fire on their head. There is no history fact that states that people were in the same room and spoke different languages. God is not, uh, has not run out of new things. Here me and hear me well. God God Katonda. Will always do something new. The people that are going to prosper in Aba, that something new are people who are walking with him. How? Because he will guide them. He will guide them. Tell them what is happening next. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You should know what's happening. By now you should know that after this lockdown, you have no job. But God has got your back. You have no money. But you shall eat. Because the Lord is on your side. You may not have everything you need. But let me tell you something. Some of you are already having dreams. Some of you are developing ideas. God is already speaking to you what you need to do next. We have to walk with God. He's the only one that has has been where we are headed. God is not bound by time. He has been in the future. 
He can go anywhere in the past. He was. He is. And he still is. You need to understand the nature of, the, of God, the God that we serve. Hallelujah, church. Amen. So he will guide you into all, into all truth. But he, will, but he will tell you things to come. The Holy Spirit has all the world trends. He knows what's going to happen. And I'm telling you, are you a believer? If you're watching me, look at me now. Good things are coming. Revival, Revival is coming. Nations are going to turn back to God. People families, individuals, backsliders, they are all returning back to his name. God is doing something new. If you are a pastor, are you a believer? Get said, God is going to fulfill every promise and every prophecy. Don't walk in fear. Switch off the TV. TV Get off the social media that's full of uh, garbage and, uh, and uh, negative. Do not listen to people who are negative in life. Pick up your Bible. Write your dreams down. Write, get a dream book and write Five idea. Five years from now, decide from that which God has spoken to you what you need to be. Do not base out of fear to make decisions for your family. Every husband, listen to me. You learn a new thing. Because God is doing a new thing. God has all the world trends. And the current trends. Don't assume things. Don't just predict from what you know. The Holy Spirit knows the future. A lot of what we are walking into today has already been reviewed. But many people did not pay attention. For the last three years in the Kawempe Worship Center, we've always had the prophetic voice of God. God has spoken to us. And if you go back through the book of Acts, you can see these disciples who became apostles depending on the Holy Spirit to walk. Walking with God. Winners and champions in this new time. And in this new season are going to be people who walk with God. They shall know the time. They shall know what to do. Because they shall hear his voice. You don't have to be blind. You don't, you don't have, we have entered a season, a new season. And God is going to be real to those who believe in him. You will see his face. You hear his voice. You will see his miracles. You will hear his voice. So don't forget the dreams that you are having in your sleep right now. Remember every vision of the night. I'm telling you, God is already speaking. I'm already writing down in a book what this church will do after the lockdown. Very exciting things. Because the Holy Spirit is taking from the, 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 the the, the future and giving to us. So, here is your action plan. Number one, have a daily personal prayer time. Have a daily personal prayer time. I know many of you are praying with family. But I just said personal. 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 Individually. Pray by yourself. Number two. Read your Bible. Daily. 
The promises of God are hidden in this book called the Bible. They actually speak of the times we are in. Many people, the Bible says for the, for, for the nation shall be shall tremble with fear. But those who believe, they shall look up because our salvation is closer than when we first began. All those are hidden in your Bible. Have a daily personal prayer time. Read your Bible. Number three and the last. Have a quiet time. You need to pray and then be silent. Because when many of us pray, we're speaking to God but God wants to speak to you. And and can you now. imagine me walking with my wife on the road and she does all the talking and I just, um, just I mean she will say something and she will need me to respond. That's a relationship. We are growing with God. So your action plan this week have a daily personal prayer time. Number two, read through your Bible. Number three, have a quiet time. God speaks in the silence. Observe your night dreams and visions. And visions. Listen to people who hear from God. They will call your phone and tell you dreams. All the instructions God has given. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. Thank you for, for your word. Thank you for encouraging us. But we bless you for who you are. I'm praying for my brothers and sisters that have been discouraged. May you revive revive their hope and faith. Lord, I'm praying in Jesus' name that those who have not known you personally that in this season Holy Spirit, introduce yourself to them. May they know you. Open their ears to hear your voice. Open their eyes to see your face. Speak to them, O God. Let them know that you are there with them, O God. You promise to never forsake us. I pray for those who have been lonely, thinking that you forgot them. Let your presence console and comfort them. Give them a great week. I, I bless you in Jesus' name. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord provide for your need. May the Lord be your keeper. May the Lord be your shield. May he be your provider. And may, be, may he be your protector. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.